So here I'm going to show you how to make a make a cable stake and a chain anchor for um, for predator traps for dry land traps, which the same applies to water traps. You just may need to make them longer or use a more heavy duty or a bigger anchor at the end. So there's a few basic tools you'll need um, for for cable for making cable stakes. You're going to need a cable cutter. Um, these spring loaded cable cutters are, are pretty darn handy if you're going to be making a bunch of stakes. You'll need an S hook tool of some type. And then you also need a swaging tool or a swagging tool, whatever what you want to call it. But um, you know, I know these are pretty expensive in the trapping supply catalogs, so I would encourage you. I picked this one up from Home Depot for about 30 bucks. Now that's been a few years back, but um, before you go spending a lot of money, especially if you're not going to be doing a lot of snaring, making snares and things, uh, go double check your local hardware store or Home Depot or Lowe's. See if they've got one of these tools for cheaper than thirty. Thirty dollars, or th cheaper than a hundred dollars, anyways. You know, if you can get it thirty or forty bucks, that'd be a lot better off. Um, and then my cable, I typically buy it in in the spool by the thousand. It's uh, cheaper that way, and it's also, um, you know, you always got plenty when you need it. All right. So first off, you need to know what length of cable, what length of stake you need. So I know in my ground, I like to have about a twelve inch uh, long stake. So you know, I'll measure out, and you got to keep in mind when you're measuring that your cable, you've got to loop, make a loop on both ends, so that's going to eat up a, a couple of inches of your cable, so you need to cut your cable longer than you know your stake needs to be, so I'm going to go, I want a 12 inch stake, so I'm going to go with 16 inches of cable just to make sure I've got plenty of room. I'd rather make a, a stake a little bit long than a little bit short. So I've got my cut to length piece of cable. Now I've got my double ferrules, and this is all 3 30 seconds. So I'm going to slide one end in and bring it out the other. And you don't want to make your loop too small um, because it can be tough if you make it really, really small to, to get you. You think you're saving some cable and, and uh, saving some money, but it, may be, it can make it tough to get your J hook through there. So, you know, that's a pretty good size loop. You can just barely stick your finger in there. So I'll do the same thing on the other side. Feed it through, then stick it back through. And I like for just a little bit of the tag end to be sticking out so I know that I've got, you know, the cable all the way through. Now I've got it. I know that's a good length, so I'll take my my tool, feed it in, and I like to do the end closest to the tag end first. So I'll, I'll crimp it down. And I like to crimp. I, I, I've never had anybody tell me, a you know, a good rule of thumb, so I... I typically crimp three times and that doesn't leave, you know, really any extra room. That pretty much crimps the entire, the entire ferrule. And, and I just want to make sure, I don't want any failures to be because I was getting lazier um, trying to rush through my, my, one of the processes that I go through to set my traps and prepare my traps. So, you know, it doesn't add that much time. To the mix so I just I'll give it three crimps all right so now I've got my cable portion ready to go now I just need to put my anchor on the end of it and I'm using a, a pogo anchor which is just a, a, a fender washer and I've got my J hook now one thing to keep in mind if you use these pogos is that um, your J hooks gonna have to be open extra wide so that the the hook will actually fit through the the washer and go all the way on there so you know it, it can be a little bit of a hassle but you're going to need to open the, every one of those hooks up most likely another thing is you know if you would just order a set of uh, you know a hundred or ever how many you need of the uh, heavy duty J hooks uh, that's probably going to be your best bet um, I, I got cheap one time and tried to use reuse some old J hooks that I'd taken off some other traps and they had kind of a cone shaped end on them instead of that you know that flat head on the end of them and that cone shape, it has, that, that head has to be just like that to go into the pogo driver. And that cone shape gave me all kinds of fits and I wound up having to go and redo a bunch of my anchors because of that. So now I make sure that I just buy brand new J hooks to use. So all you do is feed your J hook through the, your washer through the J hook. You've got a little extra swivel action on that end. And then feed your hook through one end of the cable. Take your S hook tool Cinch that, cinch your J hook closed, and that's ready to go. You attach it to your trap, and you're good to go. So another option, maybe a little more permanent for the uh, 
you know, for for an earth anchor style um, anchor is a, a a chain using chain instead of cable. And now you could use you know pogos, use the washer anchors just like this on this chain, but you know the the big part of the chain is this is a permanent style. To me, this is a permanent style anchor. So you know if I if I use chain, I'm intending to use and reuse, pull and in place and pull and place that that trap and that anchor. So um, you know, in those washers, they're going to bend. Or they're going to start bending after several uses. So, I don't consider that a permanent, permanent option. So, I'll use one of these, you know, stake, the super staked style stakes, and uh, you're a good option. You can either use an S hook, or I'm I'm a fan of the cold shuts on these. And so, all this this cold shuts real simple. It feeds through the the nut that's on the the stake there, and then you feed your chain through the other end of the, the cold shut, put it in your S-hook tool, and tighten it down, and now a lot of times, you know, when you're initial tightening, the the pin end won't end up, uh, line up with the hole, so you may need a pair of channel locks. To use to kind of get things lined up. And you want to be careful when you're using the channel locks because you can easily over tighten and pass right by the, the hole where you need to be. But to so get it just about where it's going to line up, I'll put it back in my, my S hook tool. And there you have it. You've got it fed through. Now, one thing you may want to do is either try to brad that end just to give it a little bit of extra security, or you can take and just hit it with a welder, put a little bead of weld on there just to make sure that that doesn't come open. But then you've got a, a heavy duty permanent permanent anchoring system or you got your disposable anchoring system system that you know is relatively cheap if you need to cut that when you pull in your traps and don't worry about it but that's two options for anchoring your traps